Tesla CEO Elon Musk has reiterated his skepticism about hydrogen's role in the planned shift to a more sustainable future, describing it as the dumbest thing I could possibly imagine for energy storage. During an interview at the Financial Times Future of the Car Summit on Tuesday, Musk was asked if he thought hydrogen had a role to play in accelerating the transition away from fossil fuels. No, he replied. I really can't emphasize this enough. The number of times I've been asked about hydrogen, it might be. It's well over 100 times, maybe 200 times, he said. It's important to understand that if you want a means of energy storage, hydrogen is a bad choice. In today's video, we will be showing you Elon Musk's all-new hydrogen car shocks, the entire car industry. Without further ado, let's begin. Expanding on his argument, Musk went on to state that gigantic tanks would be required to hold hydrogen in liquid form. If it were to be stored in gaseous form, even bigger tanks would be needed, he said. Described by the International Energy Agency as a versatile energy carrier, Hydrogen has a diverse range of applications and can be deployed in sectors such as industry and transport. In 2019, the IEA said hydrogen was one of the leading options for storing energy from renewables and looks promising to be a lowest cost option for storing electricity over days, weeks, or even months. The Paris-based organization added that both hydrogen and hydrogen-based fuels were able to transport energy from renewables over long distances from regions with abundant solar and wind resources, such as Australia or Latin America, to energy-hungry cities thousands of kilometers away. Musk has a history of expressing strong opinions about hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cells. A few years ago, when the subject came up during a discussion with reporters at the Automotive News World Congress, the electric vehicle magnate described hydrogen fuel cells as extremely silly. In June 2020, he tweeted fuel cells equals fool cells, adding in July of that year, hydrogen fuel cells make no sense. Judging by his comments this week, he remains unconvinced about hydrogen. It does not naturally occur on Earth, so you either have to split water with electrolysis or crack hydrocarbons, he told the Financial Times. When you're cracking hydrocarbons, you really haven't solved the fossil fuel problem, and the efficiency of electrolysis is poor. Today, the majority of hydrogen production is based on fossil fuels. Another method of production includes using electrolysis, with an electric current splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen. If the electricity used in this process comes from a renewable source, such as wind or solar, then some call it green or renewable hydrogen. Hydrogen projects using electrolysis have attracted interest from major companies and business leaders in recent years. But it would appear Musk is not a fan. The efficiency of electrolysis is poor, he told the Financial Times. So you really are spending a lot of energy to split hydrogen and oxygen. Then you have to separate the hydrogen and oxygen and pressurize it. This also takes a lot of energy. And if you have to liquefy hydrogen, oh my god, he continued. The amount of energy required to make hydrogen and turn it into liquid form is staggering. It is the most dumb thing that I could possibly imagine for energy storage. Musk may be dismissive about hydrogen's role in the energy transition, but other influential voices are a little more optimistic. These include Anna Spitzberg, who is Deputy Assistant Secretary for Energy Transformation at the U.S. Department of State. During a recent panel discussion moderated by CNBC's Hadley Gamble, Spitzberg called hydrogen a game-changing technology that speaks to a variety of other sources. Because it can underpin nuclear, it can underpin gas, it can underpin renewables, it can clean a good portion of it, and so can CCUS carbon capture utilization and storage. Elsewhere, February saw Michelle Delavigna, Goldman Sachs Commodity Equity Business Unit Leader for the EMBA region, highlight the important role he felt it would have going forward. If we want to go to net zero, we can't do it just through renewable power, he said. We need something that takes today's role of natural gas, especially to manage seasonality and intermittency. And that is hydrogen, Delavigna argued, going on to describe hydrogen as a very powerful molecule. The key, he said, was to produce it without CO2 emissions. And that's why we talk about green, we talk about blue hydrogen. 
Blue hydrogen refers to hydrogen produced using natural gas, a fossil fuel. With the CO2 emissions generated during the process captured and stored, there has been a charged debate around the role blue hydrogen can play in the decarbonization of society. Whether we do it with electrolysis or we do it with carbon capture, we need to generate hydrogen in a clean way, Della said. And once we have it, I think we have a solution that could become, one day at least 15% of the global energy markets, which means it will be over a trillion dollar market per annum. Instead of trying to compete for head-on with Tesla, Toyota is looking at hydrogen fuel cells as a way to power its future electric vehicles and lead that segment of the market. The very fact that its hydrogen-powered Mirai is now in its second generation proves that there to be clear, Tesla's vehicles are powered by batteries, not so different from those that power your laptop. Hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles, on the other hand, work differently. They are the same in the sense that electric motors move the cars, but different when it comes time to recharge or refuel. In the case of hydrogen fuel cells, Elon Musk has been vocal about his stance on hydrogen fuel cells. He doesn't like it, and he mentions it in this tweet. It doesn't look like he's going to change his mind anytime soon. At this point, you have to realize Tesla has no plans on investing in hydrogen fuel cells. That could be the reason Toyota is investing in hydrogen and trying to make it a viable alternative. Because this way, they could be the leaders in this market and won't have to compete with the likes of Tesla and Elon Musk. Diversification is a smart marketing strategy. Tesla's cars have been performing well in sales, and it is the world's largest electric car manufacturer. But taking the EV route has a few limitations, the primary ones being driving range and recharge times. Even though its batteries have features that assist in storing and conserving energy, they can only power vehicles for so long before you need to plug them into the electrical grid for a recharge be it on a charging station or at your home. Recharging those big batteries take a long time compared to filling up your gas tank or recharging your laptop battery. An EV will need about 15 minutes plugged in at a Tesla supercharging station to have enough juice to cover a significant distance again. According to Tesla, these supercharging stations will give you 200 miles of range in that time. While Tesla has a solid standing here, with its extensive supercharger network and things have improved significantly with regard to battery technology, innovative fast charging infrastructure, and upcoming solid state batteries, the experience is far from ideal for other makes and models. Range anxiety is still a very harsh reality and is holding back people from making the switch to EVs. Batteries are also some of the heaviest components in an EV, which in turn increases energy consumption even further. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.